Hello there, Erin here. I have another scrapbook layout for you today. I'm going to be creating a single page scrapbook layout with the Cosette collection. I've already done a little bit here on my channel with this paper pack and it has a very Parisian kind of vintage feel to it, a little bit shabby chic. So I have this photo of my grandparents on their wedding day. That's my grandma and my grandpa there and I just love this photo. So I am going to play up the whole vintage vibe and document this picture of them. There's a little bit of damage on the photo and you know I could have gone and found some editing software to fix that but I'm going to just layer a little embellishment over the corner of that picture so that's not a big deal but let me clear these up um, I've already gone over the paper pack but you can see it definitely has that Parisian feel to it love the wildflowers mulberry background here the opposite side is this beautiful pine green i used this one in um, the last layout i did and then i already cut into those this is kind of a fun paper to fussy cut a little bit of these uh you know embellish or to use as embellishments and then of course this one here and you can see that distressing in the background there i love the way that looks the opposite side of this one is are those yellow wildflowers. So let me grab my Versamat real quick. I just need one because it's a single page layout with only one photo. You really can't turn that into a double page. I really like this pattern paper. It's a mist colored background with the tiny little leaves. And then I have a piece of vanilla cardstock. So I'm kind of picturing the photo center and then off to the right a little bit. And we're going to do some paper tearing. I think that torn paper edges lend themselves really well to the vintage look. And I just want to get an idea of where I want this. We're going to tear a little bit from the top and I'm just trying to get that started. And then I'm going to kind of go in a like a oval semicircle here. And this is going to allow that pattern paper to uh, show through from behind. We of course don't want to cover up all that pretty pattern paper. So I'm going to remove a large section from the bottom as well. So I'm just kind of placing my photo to see where I want it. I'm picturing it torn along the bottom of the where the photo is going to sit because I'm going to kind of stack a bunch of um, ephemera underneath the photo for the photo to sit on. And then I really like to rough up the edges. I'm just kind of you know tearing it with my fingernails and rolling it a little bit. I want to smooth that circle out we had kind of an awkward spot there but just kind of roughing it up so it has a little bit more texture if you wanted to save even more of that pattern paper you can remove the section that's hidden and adhere it onto vanilla cardstock Along with tearing the paper edges, I really love to add a little distressing with ink. One of my go-to colors is toffee, and then I have a little blending brush here, and this is just going to give it an aged look. So we will ink up the uh, blending brush here, and I'm just gonna go around and kind of create a vignette. So where the edges are, I don't want this perfect, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. I'll kind of put it heavier in the corners a little bit, and I've obviously sped this up quite a bit, but working on my all-purpose mat that way I can kind of blend off the mat and work my way onto my paper and it creates a nice soft look and of course the blending brushes you avoid avoid getting any harsh circles or uh, you know dark areas you can add as little or as much color as you would like but I'm thinking that looks pretty good we'll go a little bit more over this torn edge here just get that a little bit darker and there i'm liking that so we can place this back on the mat i'm going to clear my all-purpose mat out of the way and bring this back into center for you i have a couple stamps that i want to incorporate here so you have seen me use this one and unfortunately it's no longer available this was a special that was out specifically for the Stamptacular sale, which went on for the entire month of March. But uh, I know a lot of you did get this stamp, so I'm gonna use it and hopefully you have something similar. I've really inked it up so it's hard to tell, but basically it's this really cool uh, background and I love it. I've done a lot of cards with this layout, but I thought it'd be neat to maybe um, put it behind the photo here. I love the flowers, but I also have this stamp which is called dream maker and this is not out yet this is part of a special a national scrapbooking day special that will be released on may 1st but i have the stamp here and what i re uh, there's lots of things to love about this one but uh this text stamp 
is really what this made it a have to have for me. Here, let's see if you can see it better. I'll take the stamp off. You can tell I've used it a bunch already, but it's this text that looks like an old book page and it's already made it to where it looks worn and nothing is more vintage to me than old book pages. Plus we've got these great like watercolor splotches and then a little splatter stamp, another cool texture, and then some floral images there. And then the second half of this stamp are some great uh, like title builder. Um, we have always and again can you see that it has the text in it. So that is so cool. And then we have living in the moment, in my heart, chasing sunshine, have faith, love you, thankful for you, happy, celebrating you and smiling. So these could be used for cards as well. But you know how much I love creating my word sentiments that I put on my layouts. And these are perfect for that living in the moment. I'm going to be able to use that on just about any scrapbook uh, layout, chasing sunshine, um, you know, thankful for you, lots of different things. The word happy you can stamp that and you know add that to just about any layout as well so I really was debating if I want to use this one or if I want to have it make look like an old book page I think I'm going to go for the book page behind the photo here I'm going to turn my Versamat over so that I can use that foam cushioning for a stamping background there. It makes for a better impression. So I need to figure out where I want to get my photo, probably right about there. And then we need, we're going to use toffee ink. And then let me grab a block. I always like to lay my stamp down on the table, then pick it up with my block. And you don't have to season it every time, but I just kind of do. I really feel like it makes a difference. So we're going to ink this up in toffee here. And then I'm just going to hold it up and then scoot the photo out of the way because we want it coming out from behind the photo. And this is super easy to line up. And uh, let me just ink that up again and we'll repeat the process. And I think that just two of these is going to work well. Ooh, that's going to look really cool. I like that. I want to use a little tiny splatter stamp on here just to add a little splatter over the top of the text just to give it even a further aged feel. So we'll just do the same thing in toffee. And this is a tiny splatter stamp. You guys know how much I love my background uh, elements and perfectly imperfect patterns. So this is just kind of a little mini one. So that's looking good. I like that. I can go ahead and flip my Versamat back over. I think that's all the stamping for now. I went ahead and pulled several stickers off the coordinating sticker sheet and removed the adhesive. I also have this typewriter from the sticker sheet. I love it. Definitely want to use that. And then I pulled this little sentiment to bring in the peach color that is in those florals. So this is the largest element. So I'm going to start with this one first, and then the leaves are going to kind of radiate out from behind the typewriter. Let's use this one too. And then of course I need one on the opposite side to balance that out. I'm thinking I want my title right under the photo. Let's see here. I do also have this zip strip and that's just going to bring in a little bit of that toffee and then I like the lace detail. So let me see if that's how that's going to look kind of just coming out from underneath here. It's there's a little bit of the blue paper showing there, but I think that's going to be okay. And then we can just layer our typewriter. Let me bring those back in. Aren't those wildflowers pretty? There is a stamp set that uh, you can create a bunch of those flowers as well. I have the pocket cards and I pulled these two because they go along with the peach color. I thought about maybe this one, but I don't like it. Let's try this one. And yes, I do like the way that looks. It brings that peach color up to the top of the layout. And then we have this cute little postage stamp. Actually, that's gonna hide that damage up at the top really well. In this collection, there are some paperboard die cuts that have this newsprint on there. There's tons of different shapes, butterflies and birds. There's an ampersand and flowers. There's the ampersand there. Arrows, hearts, all sorts of doodads in there. And I absolutely love them. I could use those, but I also have these butterflies that I created using the butterfly slimline embossing folder and stencils. And so I thought these might be fun to use on this layout. I love these, but I thought since I have a little set of these, maybe I'll use them. 
um, and I'll show you how I made these, but I think they're they're so pretty. So in our creative design team membership group, we had a whole month on embossing. And so one of my projects, I did like a scrapbook layout, where there was all different ways to use embossing folders. And one of the projects I used this butterfly embossing folder here so you can see it has I don't know if you can see that it has a whole row of butterflies and they vary in sizes just kind of going up and then there's coordinating stencils so you emboss your paper and then you have your outline stencil so this does the big you know outlines you can color them in and I use the toffee ink just to color the outside. I embossed it on vanilla cardstock, then use the toffee ink to emboss around the edge and then you can bring in a detail layer and it makes it so easy because they all just line up. And that is how I added the charcoal color to these gorgeous butterflies and I fussy cut them out. So you can emboss them and get this look on the you know, paper and just make a beautiful card background, but you can also cut out your embossing, uh, embossed images and use them as ephemera. So I use the platinum stickles to add a little sparkle to the center of the butterfly's bodies there. So pretty. I love how that turned out. I'll show you guys one of the cards I created in this class. So there they are, the butterflies going all the way up. And look, there's that uh, text stamp too that I used here to create that old book page. So I stamped that in black and then did a little toffee splatter and, you know, did the, this is what the butterflies turned out. And I made some rainbow cards and we had a lot of fun, you know, or I had a lot of fun with these. Um, and that was just one of the projects. In our classes, we kind of do a deep dive on a text and then show lots of different ways to use it. But I quite like how these butterflies turned out. And you can see they have a little bit different uh, variations in the detail layer as well. So I thought that that was pretty cool. Back to the layout, I want to spread these butterflies out and kind of create a visual triangle. So let's put the small one up here with the postage stamp. I don't want the postage stamp all by its lonesome there. It needs something else um, kind of anchoring that. And then maybe this one down here, and we'll set that one aside for now. I want to bring in my title. So these are left over from a storybook layout I did. It was a Disneyland spread and I changed that layout like three different times. So I had all these title options and I just kind of threw them in my title bin and I think it's gonna work really well. I love how it just anchors that photo and memories kind of works for everything. I think it's really appropriate for this particular photo. So I have a little flower here left over from a card project and then this is from the sticker sheet. From the Cosette workshop collection, I have a lot of these die cut pieces. So I'm going to use that for my journaling. Now we need a little something up in this corner right here. Maybe I can use my Parisian note stamp. I really wanted to use this stamp set on this layout. So maybe if we just kind of do a little bit, I'm thinking second generation. So it's just kind of a soft look. Let me ink up my Parisian notes. And yes, my block is a little bit too small, but it's okay. I was too lazy to go grab a larger one. I'm gonna put my foam right underneath. You can, if you don't have a Versamat, use the little foam inserts that come with all of the stamps and it'll help give you a better impression. So I stamped that off, uh, I inked it up, stamped it off on the scratch paper and then use second generation on the layout for a softer look. And I, that's going to be my base for my little embellishment cluster. I grabbed this particular pattern paper from the mix-ins. It matches and I cut a little banner piece. We'll just kind of dovetail the end there. The mix-in papers are designed to go with all of the current collections in the catalog and they're really nice to have because they stretch your, um, you know, they stretch your collections and you get those extra bits and pieces to go along with them. I'm debating cutting a smaller butterfly, but I think this this will work. We can get away with it. I just want to ink this up because it was kind of soft against the background and getting lost a little bit. So I'll add some definition here. I also have this 
family roots stamp and this is really really perfect for vintage layouts and i love the titles on here it does come with coordinating dies if you get the dies but there's this really pretty frame there's a vintage camera and then this vintage pocket watch so i thought i'd stamp those and maybe see how they look on my layout so i'm going to use some black ink i have archival black that's my go-to for my scrapbook layouts and then this is the frame here i think that is just really pretty and then we'll repeat the process and stamp the camera on vanilla i've just got some scraps of vanilla cardstock here and we'll stamp that oh that quite didn't turn out how i wanted it to so i can ink it up again and that looks much better and then we'll uh, stamp the pocket watch as well I'll go ahead and get all of these stamped images die cut off camera and here is the finished result. I love how the die cut removes the center of the frame. That would be very hard to fussy cut so I appreciate that detail immensely. I'm thinking if we layer this up here and the butterfly just kind of overlapping. Oh I like that. That looks kind of cool. Let's go ahead and commit and tack that down to the layout so I don't spend 10 minutes moving it around. Sometimes you just gotta go with it right? And I really like this little pocket watch. Maybe we'll swap this out for this sticker here. And yeah, I like that. So I have black in the typewriter and that's why I kind of use black. I wanted to introduce that into the other areas. I think I'm gonna save the camera for another project. There's just not quite enough room. Now, a few of my crafty friends are playing along with the Cosette collection as well. In fact, I'm going to leave their links listed in the description box below. They've got some fun ideas to share with you featuring this paper pack. My uh, Melanie sent me a picture, a sneak peek of hers, and I saw that she added the date to the typewriter on her layout. And I thought, that is a good idea. I'm gonna borrow that. So thanks, Melanie, for the inspiration. I'm using the memo alphabet and I'm going to put 1943 on the typewriter here. And that is the year my grandparents got married in Amarillo, Texas in November. So I will include the details in the journaling, but I thought just having the date on the typewriter there was perfect. I'll go ahead and get everything adhered off camera. One last tiny little detail. I fussy cut a couple of these blossoms from the pattern paper. They match the flowers coming out from behind the typewriter and I just wanted that color kind of scattered throughout the layout. I'll hold this up for you so you can get a little closer look. I did add the journaling to the circle there and I really like it. There's a lot to take in, a lot of little details here, but I really love how it turned out. Don't forget to open up the description box below. You can find links to my social media for still shots along with links to my crafty friends playing along. You'll want to check out their videos as well. Give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more inspiration. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.